Digital 410 Productions proudly presents the Waterman and D-Train Show. Digitized live from the ACT Computer Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, it's the Waterman and D-Train Show. Wow, went a little throwback on that one. I thought we were going to go with the new theme song, but uh, it is what it is. We're flying by the seat of our pants tonight like we always are. Big welcome to the OG500. Thank you guys for all your continued support. And for those of you watching at home, don't worry, Dave is in fact here, Gordon is here, um, I don't know, we're just getting silly, things are a little crazy right now, but joining us live from Skype, from Astero, Florida, he is our co-host, Dave the Waterman, Dave, what is going on, friend? Alright, 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 man, doing good, bro, woo, hope living everybody's... the dream, woo, hope everyone can see on the screen and as always joining us live yeah. from skype via skype from las vegas nevada we're putting the tv in use tonight is gordon abernathy gordon how you doing tonight fella and as always we do 10 minutes before we get live and now that we're live gordon is all muzzled and sounds like shit yeah, i was about to say he went out on me there buddy and of course i mean we're live now there's nothing i can do about it there's a lot of noise <laughs> this is just ridiculous so what's going well, on, we Dave? Got a lot of, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on tonight. You know, obviously me being in Estero, Gordon in Vegas, you in the Cape, man. So this is a first, but I, I'm, I'm liking it, man. I'm not because I can't hear Gordon, and now I'm hearing a bunch of wind noise. And as always, people are getting tired of hearing all the crap because we're constantly right. dicking around with stuff on the most inconsistent, consistent podcast. You're and damn right. And Gordon's mic just sounds completely horrible. Gordon, uh, drop out cool, and join man. back in with us. Well, Bill. So what's going on, Dave? How's the stir yeah, treating bro. you tonight? Good, man. Very good. It's been a um, you know jam-packed couple of weeks, man. Uh, I know you've been super busy, but I'm telling you, uh, work has really picked up, man. Uh, we lost an employee. Uh, she decided to to move on to bigger and better things, so that's pretty cool. But uh, I've taken up a little bit of the slack, man. So I haven't really been able to leave. Leave a stero, man. It's been that busy. It really has. And so what did you have going on this week? And I haven't seen you since last, well, it's been two weeks because you weren't with us yeah. last week because you're unavailable because of work. What, yeah. what has been going on in the world of Dave in the last two weeks? Oh, uh, man, i got to tell you, this is pretty bitching, man. I, I, have you been out to uh, Oktoberfest? Not this year, but I've gone like the last three years. Okay, well, that's been a big, big thing. I was just going to tell you what happened this weekend, man, for sure. But this weekend, oh, man, unbelievable. Uh, let's see here. It would have been yesterday's. Remember that weather we had yesterday kind of ruined it for a lot of people. You know, I was so out of touch, and I've been so busy that I had no idea that there was a tropical-based storm that had a name oh. that was coming towards Florida. And so I went to bed uh -huh. on Friday night, woke up Saturday mm -hmm. morning, and was like, all rain. It's like, okay, well, this is fun. And yeah. it just seemed like a normal rainy florida day to me and then when i i woke up and i got on facebook i'm seeing like up in northern florida there's cars flipped over there's yeah. her uh hurricane force winds and then of course in cape coral and i'll read the story a little bit later um there was a tornado here in the northwest cape yeah yeah i heard about that and that and like i said that that kind of hampered uh, yesterday's Oktoberfest plans there's a few, I'd say maybe a thousand people out there uh, on Saturday, but today, man, they came out in force. Well, I can imagine it, they wouldn't want to come out on Saturday because that property is basically sitting in a swamp, and so yeah, with all the rain, you're just going to be walking around in ankle-deep mud and water all day, and you don't want to get your later hoses yeah. all muddy because you can't wash them. <laughs> Hell no, and that's what I thought was gonna be. It was gonna be like today. I thought, hey, guess what? I'm gonna be walking into just a mud bog. And it's going to be that way all day. But it dried out pretty quick. The ground soaked it up. And the people went berserk. I mean, you know, I've only been to Oktoberfest uh, once, maybe, t no, yeah, one time. One time, and that was like 10 years ago. Gordon, do they have any sort of, oct I mean, I know Vegas has everything. But do they even have like a German population out there that would need something such as an Oktoberfest? Yeah, we do have some Oktoberfest. Hopefully but, you can hear me now. Yeah, it's probably nothing in, because of all the other things going on in Vegas. It's probably 
doesn't even yeah. hit the map around there, does it? Yeah, and that is true. Unfortunately, with a, a very vast culture that we have out here in Vegas, uh, things tend to wash each other out. And there's yeah. a lot of dueling um, festivals on the weekend. But I believe there was some Oktoberfest held uh, out at the Hofbrau House, of course. And then, to be quite honest, I haven't, I haven't followed closely with anything else. Well, let me ask you this, because we all know Dave's a partier and a big drinker, and so I'm sure he loves the environment that is the Oktoberfest, and it's enjoyable. <laughs> um, I've gone out there a few times where I'll get a beer or two, and I'll, and I'll get the food, and I'll watch the people walk around with the chickens on their heads and, the, like I said, the later hosens and all that. But yeah. for me, it's a two-hour, three-hour visit, and then I'm gone. Um, but I got family members who have made uh, a tradition, if you will, over the last 10 years or so with their friends. They go and they literally stack about 30 pitchers by the end of the night. And f- for me, I'm just not big enough of a partier to spend five, six, eight hours there. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. Hey, listen, it was so insane. Like you're talking about stacking pitchers. Mm-hmm. People, you know, you get you, there was, you know, 15 people to a group, 25 people to a group. They are just I mean, the pitchers, 20, 40, 50, you know, pitchers are just stacked on the tables, man. And not only that, now they're catching buzzes and they want to get real and be like, real Oktoberfest in Bavaria yeah. and they're going and, and they're going and buying those uh 180 280 dollar steins from the little uh sales stand sure I mean they're dropping money man and I good mean, on the, and know, good on the fine people at the German American Social Club for actually having enough pitchers because you would think at a certain point they would just say hey can you bring the other one up and refill it there's 30 of them yeah you got a tower on your table uh mm-hmm. do you really need to add another one but no they as far as I know, I've never seen anybody complain about them running out of beer pitchers over there. No, not at all. And it, it, one thing I loved about it is the empty kegs, they stack them. Mm-hmm. And they take the beer trucks, the two keg, big giant keg trucks. Now, they're bringing in more kegs, obviously, because they're going through a couple of tractor trailers easily a day. You know, probably, six, I'd say anywhere between four to six tractor trailers a day at least. But they take all the empty kegs and they start stacking them. Like you would the 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 pictures, mm-hmm. and they build this giant wall for people to go take their pictures up against, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it'll be interesting to see how big it ends uh, after next weekend's Oktoberfest when it's all said and done. How big that uh, keg wall gets, man! It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's almost like the backdrop of the um, Halitzer crew during a war they fire around right. and they throw the shell and stack it up put another one in fire around and throw the shell and stack it up and by the end of the day you just got a whole entire mount of spent you know um howitzer shells all stacked up yeah it's pretty damn cool but uh i gotta say these some of these women out there uh-huh go- gorgeous gorgeous women and they take it full on with the the pigtails oh yeah like you know, and the the I guess I don't even know what you call it the garb. Yeah. The Bavarian the garb. Where? <laughs> What's that? Absolutely. What's that? Cleavage, cleavage everywhere. Oh man, yeah, the, yeah, they're yeah, they're like wearing uh, those. What do they call them? Like a corset to boost them up. Yeah, it's the you know? the women's non leather equivalent to the man's um, yeah. lederhosen. You know, I wasn't joking yeah. around earlier when I said the guys don't want to get their lederhosen all muddy because there are plenty of dudes. You can actually buy them there. And for those of you who don't know, because yeah. later hosens are made out of leather and and or suede, you do not wash them. Really? Yeah, there's a cleaning. I'm sure they spritz them down with something, but you can't, or maybe you can take them dry cleaner, but traditionally you don't wash them because it's, you mm. know, they're the material they're made out of. Could you wow. just imagine how funky an old pair of later hosen that's never been washed? Yeah, like, wanna, like in the so. 20s and 30s when, you know, they didn't have chemical dry cleaners. Oh. <laughs> you just had to take them down and beat them on the rock. <laughs> yeah, man. But once again, they're That's leather, good. so I don't even know if you could you could do that. I don't know. Maybe just hang them on the line and air them out. Ah, must be. You have to do something. Another observation I made is the coolness of the people and how I only saw one person getting kind of roughed up by the police. Only one out of out of the two days I was there. I'm sure so you deserved it. But roughed up yourself? No, no, it wasn't me, bro. It's not me you're looking for, man. It's not me you're looking for. But it was only one person, and I thought that's pretty cool. Even though these people are getting pretty loaded, 
and you know they're getting more and more loaded. They're partying right now. But uh, yeah, so so yeah, it was it was a pretty cool crowd, man. They were just all dressed up. The music's going. It was it was bitching, man. I had a really good time, and I wasn't even drinking. How about that? Did you get yourself a sausage or a brat? Uh, no, I didn't even. Yo, oh, wait. Did I? I ate one yesterday. Excuse me, not today. I ate one yesterday. They were very good. The food there is unbelievable, man. They they did that real quick. They did have one thing uh, D train that uh-huh. I really want to try. They're called Gator Tacos. Hmm. I that was sounds like, Gator interesting. Gator Tacos it here, but like, Gator's still, gamey never... though. You almost have to put a condiment on Gator to uh, settle it down a little bit. I've, I mean, I've had Gator once or twice. Like I think the first time I had it was out at the Cabbage Fest up in mm-hmm. uh, is that Alva. Who has the Cabbage yeah. Fest, Alva? Or is it Lehigh? No, uh, yeah, no, Lehigh. I think, yeah, Lehigh's. It's well, it's like on the border. There's Swamp Cabbage Festival. I had it out there. Yeah, yeah. But, I tell you what, that kind of pulls me out of a um, a festival when you go to for you know a specific um, ethnic background. Yeah, is we see something that does clearly not belong there. Like out here, we'll go to. Um, they've actually changed it, but we went go to San Gennaro Festival. Well, San Gennaro Festival also had a lot of taco stands. They also had a pita stand. You know, it really wasn't the Catholic thing. It was just more of an international, and that's kind of the way they're, they're, they're marketing it. But I'm just like, I thought I was coming to an Italian fest. Yeah, they kind of – Cape has an Italian fest. They do too, and, and I haven't been mm-hmm. there. But I would imagine yeah. – I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, well, not everybody likes pasta or dietary restrictions. Well, then why don't you just do the Italian equivalent of whatever that dietary restriction is? You don't go – I mean, once again, you're you're supposed to be celebrating the heritage of whatever the group is that you're there, whether it's Greek, and you know, um, in this case, German. Yeah, to have a taco truck, or if it's a ta- you know taco fest, to have a, a a truck selling lasagna or something, that's definitely a little. <laughs> it's just I don't know. Like like you said, it bumps you. Yeah, it does, and and I don't know. It, but in a way, I guess I need to just change the way I look at it and say, hey. This is American. This is the true Americanization of something. I mean, it's watering it down, yes, to be a lot like everything else, but I don't know. But they called yeah. us the melting pot for so long and for a damn good reason. So, you know, it makes sense. Absolutely. Yes. Look, look, real quick. I was at uh, Taco Fest <laughs> uh, three weeks ago. Well, no, two weeks ago I was at Taco Fest. And now I've been to German, you know, the German uh, Oktoberfest. And Taco Fest was, that was bitching, man. That's another killer festival, man. I would go to uh, multiple times a year if they had it, you know. Well, while, well, we're, on, while we're on the topic of tacos, I posted a thing on my social media, on my D Train 410 on Instagram, and then obviously the D Train Facebook page. And I'm not sure if I shared it right. with the Waterman D Train show, but I was talking about maybe setting up a Taco of the Town Award and maybe me, I you, and that. Carrie go around and and sample some of the best tacos and but believe it or not that got a lot of interest on all my social media. everybody's like one person said well you need to go to super taco and i posted a picture of me i said well actually i'm posting this from the lobby of super taco as we <laughs> talk they're on my short list but there is currently yeah. a different branch um that i at the top of my list right now but i was thinking because there's so many different type of tacos i think mm-hmm. if the three of us tag team it Oh um, yeah, I could do tr- sample all the steak tacos at all the places. You could do right. all the pork or the chicken, and then Carrie could do like all the beef. That way, because um, obviously you might like a steak taco better or beef or chicken better than pork, and then if you're trying the different ones at different places, it's obviously going to affect your your judgment. So I think if we yeah. all stick to we all choose one type of taco and stick to it, and if the place doesn't carry that taco, then it'll be a zero on the, on the on the score. But I think that would probably be the fairest um, way to do it without sample uh, affecting the sample, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm down for it, man. Because clearly yeah. if I go to place A and I get a beef taco, and then I go to place B and I get the steak, clearly the steak's going to win because I prefer a steak taco. Whereas if I get a oh, steak from yeah. each place, then I can judge them equally. And then if you did the chicken or pork or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I thinking that would be the way to go about it. Oh, absolutely. And think about it. Uh, there's got to be at least – a thousand probably different taco shops between between uh, Lee County and, and Collier County, man. Well, I think what I would do, obviously we're not going to visit Got every it. one of them. I think we'd have to put together a short list, uh, maybe get suggestions okay. from the audience and then uh, formulate an oh, official right, huh? list and then go and, and cast our judgment upon them. 
Yeah, man, I think that would be perfect. That would be, uh, let's do it. Let's set that up and get it done, son. Making me hungry now talking about tacos, man. Well, while we're on the subject of food, where do you guys stand on French onion soup? I love... Mm -hmm. I actually, uh, that's one of my judgments on a restaurant, is how is a French onion soup? Yeah, What's that's the- good. I like it. Tonight was my first time ever having it, and um, I was oh, actually yeah? at someone's house, and I posted a picture on my Instagram, my Facebook page of it, and if they even had the cute little brown pot and with the cheese melted over and a piece of bread on top. Hey, real quick, real quick, was this homemade? Yeah. But the person who made it homemade used to work in restaurants back in the day, and so it was uh, of restaurant quality. Once again, I I posted a picture on my social media pages. You can see them there. Uh, What's up, John Kraft? Checking in. OG500 on the uh, Facebook live stream. So, Uh, yeah, it's just real good classic soup. I like it, but it's a little too much for me, meaning I like the flavor and the onions, but I – I struggled to eat half a bowl of it. I was ready to move on because not only did he do the French onion soup, he made a metric ton of chicken, and he did one that was moho and then one that was jerk. And so, oh, yeah. and then um, yellow rice. And so we basically, had, I pigged out tonight, and then we had cheesecake for dessert. But it was interesting because I'm eating the uh, moho chicken. I'm like, well, that's pretty good because I, I, like I said, I did the onion soup, and it's, a, it's good, but it's just a little too much for me, too much of a good thing. Kind of like cookie dough ice cream. I enjoy cookie dough, but I'm not going to eat a whole yeah. tube of it, so I don't need a whole tube of it in my ice cream. So good. Oh, yeah, and then we got that place out here, Handles, that has a what's called Oreo dough, so it's both Oreo and cookie dough. Oh, and my I, God. But anyway, before we get off of food. Well, hold uh, on real let's... quick. Um, when I was taking a bite of the jerk, it had its flavor to it. I'm like, I, I taste Christmas. And everybody's like, what? I'm like, try it. And everybody's like, holy shit, it does. It tastes like Christmas. And then Rusty's like, well, there's, there's cinnamon in it. I'm like, well, there you go. But it's so funny. So we just call it Christmas chicken because everybody who ate it after I said that, we felt – it felt like Christmas because of the flavor in the chicken. Absolutely. Oh. So one of the festivals I do want to try out here because we are known as the Ninth Island is the Hawaiian Fest. I think oh, yeah. We'll check out. We've got a lot of good uh, homemade Hawaiian food kind of restaurants from scratch. And then we got your famous l and barbecue. Uh, if, if you had that in Cali, you know what it is. But, um, yeah, I really like their pork. It, it's fantastic. It's the stuff that's cooked in the ground for like 20 hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hawaiian luau kind of stuff. Hey, let me ask you, Gordon, do they have one of those uh, all-spam restaurants out there where it's like anything and everything you can cook with spam? Have you heard about that? No all-spam, but you do go to a lot of the local lodges and um, cafes, and they do have the Loco Moco. Huh. Which is spam, basically. Well, don't you have a a, a larger population of Polynesians out there? Yeah, the old Samoan. We're considered uh, the ninth island, yeah. Hawaiian. So it would it would only make sense. Um, this isn't re- this is news, but it's not part of Gordon's news. We talked about it earlier, and like I said, I was so out of the loop. I didn't know there was a named storm that was coming through Florida, and then it did generate a tornado here in Northwest Cape, which is a little odd because over the last eighteen years, every time there is a tornado in the Cape, which actually happens more than the not. Um, I was telling somebody the other day I grew up. I lived in Kentucky and Ohio from the age zero until 21, and never once did I experience a tornado. And usually when we have tornadoes down here, they're over off the surf side and beach area, which is close to, um, right off of Veterans, which is close to Pine Island. And because it's so close yeah. to the water and that's where all the, the air comes through, the, they get a lot of tornadoes over there. But this one was actually in Northwest Cape. An EF1 tornado leaves a mile-long trail of damage in Northwest Cape Coral. This is from uh, winknews.com. A tornado ripped through Northwest Cape Coral Saturday morning with winds breaking, I'm sorry, peaking around 95 miles per hour and leaving a mile-long trail of damage. Fortunately, nobody was hurt by the storm. There are several pieces of broken glass and da- uh, damaged furniture lining the insides of Northwest Cape Coral homes. Uh, the effect of high winds from the tornadoes has made it unlivable. But those inside during the storm left unscathed. The National Weather Service in Tampa has confirmed that the tornado classified an EF-1 Touched down around 6.47 a.m. And EF-1 has an estimated peak wind speeds of 95 miles per hour. Uh, reporter Brina Ross did a walk through the house and surveyed the damage of the tornadoes. Um, as the video shows, there was significant damage within the house, including a barbecue thrown into the living room. But there was not, I'm sorry, but that was not the only house with loss. 
Um, at least 18 homes were damaged, raised, ranging in severity, but no injuries have been reported. Now, I don't have the statistics for this, but Carrie and I were talking about this earlier, Dave. Now, obviously, hurricanes, they reach those same speeds, if not faster, but they're more sure. widespread. Mm -hmm. and, and I find it's crazy that in an area where houses easily, not easily, that's not fair, but because of code, they routinely survive class three, four, five hurricanes. Yeah. And then a 94 mile an hour tornado comes through and just rips the holy hell out of the same house. And the only thing, because I'm not a um, weather guy and I, I, I haven't test, uh, t studied this stuff, the only thing I can imagine is because with a tornado, the footprint is so small and so well-defined that it's more like a um, direct smart missile hit to the house, whereas a hurricane's like a, um, I don't know, a carpet bombing, if you will. And so yeah. the pressure... That just, it's that compact twisting motion, you know? Yeah, that's Real what I was going to say. Yeah, it's, it's insane what they can do. It's literally it, just a... And, and it's sucking, you know? It's like a suction. Just it, it lifts that roof right off. You know, they say... Now, I've heard you can do this. Now, whether or not it's true or not, a lot of people in the Midwest, they crack their windows uh, just, a, just a tiny bit to, to let the pressure off the uh, roof because, you know, it's like a, uh, I'm trying to compare it to something, but when it starts sucking up the roof, if there's no, like a carburetor on a water bong, sure, you know, just like a carburetor on a bong, you know what I'm saying? You let that carb off and it goes... <laughs> So that's what people do. And it's funny you say that because I think it was later on yesterday or maybe late Friday, I was watching the old rerun of Roseanne, and it was the episode where they had the tornado and Dan's telling them to crack the window. Yeah. And I was telling yeah. Carrie, I said, that's kind of backwards to how we prepare for hurricanes down here because they mm -hmm. tell you the way hurricanes destroy your house is through an opening. It's through the open yeah. window, so the hurricane comes in like a, a hand and rips the wall out. Or if it's when your garage door collapses and the wind gets in and rips your roof off, so it's crazy that with a hurricane, you want to seal the place up, but yeah. with a tornado, at least urban legend, I don't know if, I don't know if they yeah, change it because I don't live in a tornado alley. I don't know if maybe in Oklahoma they know not to do this, but for what we've been told through growing up and through t television that you want to crack your window, you figure that would result in the same thing. By cracking the window, you're allowing the, but like you said, I guess instead of pushing, it's sucking. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's what I'm been told as well but i think it's i don't know yeah like you say urban legend is it true i'd like to get somebody on from from one of the news stations maybe we'll one get of the on people and ask schedule that for next week all right man <laughs> hey dude i've been kicking ass man right you on know? man right on i've been out just kicking ass and taking names bro Woo! speaking of kicking ass you know it's been kicking ass is the vegas cold knights taking down uh, yeah shut up <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about that yeah, yeah. They beat the Penguins. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so, boys. TV. Oh, hold on, Dave. Still... Go ahead, Gordon. Your mic's breaking up. Your connection sucks, but go ahead. I was watching the television, and there are definitely still a ton of Flurry fans back in Pennsylvania. Oh, of course. I mean, he was there for the longest time, and nobody can, not everybody can afford to go out and buy a new jersey. So when you had your, your Flurry jersey for all these years, and you can't afford a new one, you just continue to wear it. Yeah. A lot of signs, too. It was great. Go ahead, Dave. Hell yeah. I was going to say, check it out, boys, man. Now, you guys know I don't have a television, man. I have no TV, right? Yeah. So I'm at a um, location right now where there's actually a television. And a big-ass Trump flag. Uh, oh, you see that? You see oh, that everybody right sees it. <laughs> right? That big Trump flag right yeah. behind me right here? You see yeah. that big Trump flag? Yeah, we see it. So, yeah, I, you know, it's it's... It's 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 at the location. I, I got to tell okay. you, the connection's great. The microphone sounds good. If we can just replicate that at Gordon's apartment, we'd be golden. Excellent, yeah. excellent. <laughs> but uh, so so uh, I'm I'm at this location, uh -huh. and I started flipping around channels, and I've heard about the show, but I've never really watched it. Live PD. Oh, you haven't seen Live PD. Now, are you watching Live it. PD or are you watching Live PD police uh, chess camera? Because they, they had the Live PD, which is actually live, and then rebroadcast of the live stuff, and then they kind of have, like, the greatest hits, which is the equivalent of Cops. Uh, and so I'm not... watching, yeah, I was watching, well, I was probably a replay, but I was also checked out the Live 
PD. Where, yeah, you know, it, I guess it was live. So. Yeah, you weren't here last week. We're actually talking about that show because. Um, oh, were you? Yeah, I, I was watching a marathon of it, and one of the things that we were talking about is they have a new um, technology that help minimize police chases. And it's called mm-hmm. the Star Track GPS, and what it does, the cop pulls up behind the car if it's stuck at a light, and you know when it, when the speed gets slow enough, and it has an air mm-hmm. cannon in the uh, grill, and it shoots what looks like something the equivalent of a soda can, and it has a magnet and a super sticky sponge on the bottom of it, and it has GPS. So once they attach it to the car, they just stop the chase, and then they just go shut the guy's house in ten minutes. No shit. And then we're also talking about out in Las Vegas when you watch Live PD out in uh, what is that Nive County, Gordon? Nye County. That's where all the crazy. Uh, that's where all the crazy nuts live who think they're sovereign citizens and they don't have to follow oh, the laws. They're God. constantly out there, and they don't live in like single wide trailers. They live in the the trailers that are meant to go in the back of a truck bed. And oh jeez. So, yeah, and they're living off like generators, and their yards are just full of you know scrap <laughs> and shit. And they're just the craziest people. That's, <laughs> man, that's what they're referred to: desert rats. Oh yeah, desert necks, man. You know, uh, I I ran. I've come across those those desert necks instead of rednecks, man. They call them desert necks. Yeah, pretty wild. Cr- but so yeah, I'm into this live PD thing, man. And I saw this one episode where this this lady, man, total tweaker, tweaked out her PD? board. Am mm-hmm. I? PD? Yeah. Yeah. I well, PD? I swear, <laughs> must be with live PD. <laughs> That's all Look I. You, man. Show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on live, PD. Yeah. So, anyways, this girl was like tweaking bad, man. And ima- and I guess the cops pulled up, and she didn't have uh, the VIN number. I guess had been altered. And the only reason they knew that is because they had stolen tags on the ride. So she gets out. It's amazing and- that with the technology we have, people are still pulling this old-fashioned bullshit. Oh, yeah. like they're going to get away with it. Yeah, but it was funny because. They asked her, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, man, and they're like, so uh, what are you doing, man? She's like, oh, I'm just exercising, just exercising, waiting on my boyfriend, just exercising. And uh, where's your boyfriend, ma'am? Oh, he went for a jog. You know, and I'm like, this dude's not even, this is not even legit. Meanwhile, man, she's on. wearing cowboy boots and uh, long jeans, like a leather jacket. Yeah, I'm out here yeah. doing my, my running, working on my 5K. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, doing, doing some exercise, and I was just laughing, man, because she was just shredded bro was she like picking at her skin missing a bunch of teeth you know oh yeah man like she went and took scissors to her own hair man and tried to give herself a perm i mean it was bad man i was like look at this chick total desert rat man total desert rat no doubt no (laughs) doubt but i'm into i'm into that show man there's it's just like that's pretty badass yeah, what's cool is they got Franklin County, Ohio on there now. Yeah, that's where we grew up. Oh, really? Yeah, which we're always used to seeing Hamilton County, Ohio, which is down by Cincinnati, but now we actually get to see the Franklin County. And and I'm waiting for the day to see somebody I went to school with on that show. Yeah, right. Is that a good show, bro? Police officer or otherwise. I'm sure one of the two, they will show up. Well, I'm <laughs> sure at some point Lee County will be on there, no doubt. No doubt they'll have a Lee County... Uh, they might do yeah. the sheriff's yeah. office, but as you know, uh, Fort Myers yeah. Police has been kind of trying to keep their head low because they have so much scandal going on. And I think recently they're talking about having a third-party company come in and like give them a – it's almost like a review board where they get certified yeah. to yeah. have a better title. It's, it's insane. Well, one of the things I've noticed, and, and I'm wondering if there are still contracts with the cops, because they haven't, they're not out here in Las Vegas, and it seems like a lot of live PD jurisdictions I really have never seen on cops. So really? I'm wondering if some kind of contractual uh, issue there. Well, the crazy thing about cops is a lot of times, not all the times, but a lot of times they actually hire, at least back when they actually existed. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed now, at least in our market, when you drive around and you see the news van set up, you got the, the reporter chick out there with a tripod because yeah. um, they're suffering from you know an encroachment of uh, media streaming that um, now they can't afford photojournalists anymore. So now the journalist has to act as a, a cameraman and a reporter. And, but yeah, you, they used that. to. Because back in the day when we opened up at computers, I did a story with uh, the local news where we drove from Port Charlotte to Naples to see how many wireless networks we could hack into and then talk to the owners about encrypting their stuff. And the cameraman then told me that he had done a few episodes of Cops and uh, 
Oh, oh Extreme Home Makeover was the same way. When they'd go to town to town, they weren't sending out their own camera crews. They would hire the local photojournalist from the local um, affiliate to go out there and do all the filming. And he was telling me that Ty Pennington rarely even showed up on the set. Yeah, I've heard about I've heard that about that guy. That guy didn't didn't show up a whole lot. Or when he did, no accusations. We all know the guy had a drinking problem that he would show up pretty buzzed. Gordon, what's your opinion on the show of Mayans? I actually quit watching it a, over a season ago. Um, it just, I didn't, I, I just couldn't get into it like Sons. And then I think it was a continuation of some of the things I saw near the end of Sons that really put me off was just the really bad special effects, especially when it came down to Blood and Fire. Well, what if I told you at least the last season, I think season two, that Kurt Sutter only showed up to set twice? <laughs> I read the article. It is pretty interesting. Kurt Sutter. Fired from the Mayans MC by FX to and accepts blame, sort of. Uh, top television producer Kurt Sutter has been fired from the FX as executive producer of Mayans MC following multiple complaints of abrasive behavior at the network, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Sutter, best known as the creator of the hit show Sons of Anarchy, who formally dismissed from his work of Mayans MC a Sun spinoff he also created. The decision was made by FX chairman John Langford and Disney TV Studios and ABC Entertainment chairwoman Donna uh, Walden. Apparent, um, let's see, in a letter obtained by Hollywood Reporter, Sutter wrote to his cast and crew, apparently Disney HR and Business Affairs has conducted an investigation into un unacceptable conditions that have been created on the set of Minds in Season 2. As you know... I removed myself quite a bit from this season, allowing others to take a bigger role in producing the show. It appears that philosophies I'm sorry, it appears that philosophy has backfired. It's been reported by writers, producers, cast and crews that my absence and subsequent behavior when there was only created confusion, chaos, hostility, and perceived as abandonment. Or at least that's how Disney has interpreted I'm sure it's true. Uh the report da, 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 da. And so I was watching Mayans last night, and so basically he was fired because there was complaints to HR about um, hostile workplace. People are uncomfortable. I mean, him being an actual uh, guy who gives a shit and will wear his emotions right on his sleeves. Well, uh, the funny thing is I captured a photo because I was watching uh, Mayans on my DVR because I'm still hanging with it. Um, and... It cuts to a splash screen and has like the motorcycle stuff and it has the FX logo. And you know what their f catchphrase is, their theme, their tagline for FX? What's that? Fearless. <laughs> <laughs> you just fired a guy who created a show. He used to produce The Shield back in the day. He had a huge show, Sons of Anarchy. Mayans has a decent following, not as big as Sons, but it has a decent following. Apparently, he hurts some feelings, and so you fire him from a show on a network whose slogan is fearless. But D-Train, don't you understand? This is just marketing. We are under the thumb of the mouse now. Yeah. Who it man? Yeah, but if, if your whole thing is we, we push the envelope, we say things that are semi-offensive on this channel, we are quote-unquote fearless, but then you fire the creator of the show because he done or said a few things that bothered a few people. Eh, how well, fearless are you? Mm -hmm. Hey, just enough for the marketing. That's it. I guess. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. Did you guys hear about oh. the Dutch family that was found in the cellar awaiting for the end of the apocalypse? Yes, yes. They were down there for what? The, like the, well, real quick, the son, I guess, ended up at the bar, right? Dutch police and, found a family of seven people yeah. hidden in the basement of a remote farmhouse where they had reportedly spent years waiting for the end of time, officials said on Tuesday. They discovered a man believed to be the father of the family and six of his children ages between 18 to 25 uh, near the village of Rune. Runer World in the northern province of a word I can't pronounce because it's in uh, it's in the Netherlands. Police arrested 58-year-old man at the scene who was not the father. Quote, I have never come across anything like this before, local mayor Roger D. Groot. He is Groot. Told a press conference, police investigated after receiving a tip-off from somebody who was concerned about the people's living conditions and discovered the adults, De Groot said. 
They lived in an isolated lifestyle, he said, adding that they had been living on the homestead for the past nine years, and several children had not been taken up in the um, birthing register or officially registered. So during those nine years, there were children born on this homestead that have, don't have any, whatever the Netherlands equivalent of a social security number or even known to health boards or school boards. Mm -hmm. uh, many questions were unanswered as police are investigating all scenarios, the mayor added. Uh, local news station, RTV, Drift, uh, first reported the story said the family had been living in the basement for years waiting for the end of time. Some of those free, some of those freed had no idea that the other people existed, the station added. Police were alerted after a man around 25 years old, believed to be the family's oldest son, walked into a village bar on Sunday evening. The disheveled man, unwashed and wearing old clothes, said he has not been out, quote unquote, outside for the past nine years, the bar, bar owner Chris Westlock told the TV station. He said he had never been to school and he seemed very confused. He spoke in a childish way, said the barkeeper. Uh, the, man's, the man told Westerbrook he ran away from his home and urgently needed help. So I phoned the police. Upon investiga investigation, police discovered a hidden staircase behind a cupboard leading to a cellar where the man said the, family and the family's father and five others believed to be his children were hiding. From what I understand from other stories, this kid was 16 years old, or 15, yep. when his family first yeah. went into hiding. And the first thing he did when he ran away is, they don't tell in this story, he went to the bar, asked for help, <laughs> and asked for a beer. So they gave him a beer while the cops were coming. Yeah. The, real quick, they said he drank four beers. I think five. Is it five? Okay, maybe you drink five beers. Then. Imagine that, not, not drinking beer and then having five straight-up beers, man. And well, it, a couple Go ahead. How many other families do you think are scattered around the world like this currently? Uh, I, well, and the other way they're survivors with overhead oh, satellite oh. photos, they had a, a garden that was covered up with that camouflage netting and a goat. And I'm sure they had yeah, other forms goat. of livestock, but uh, there's got to be more. And well, I know the they, male guy... Well, the guy they arrested uh, wasn't the father. He was the guy whose the property's name was under. He was paying the rent on the place, so they arrested him, and they're trying to figure out who was doing all the brainwashing because essentially what you're doing is kidnapping. Mm -hmm. You're not allowing someone to leave a location under their own will, and so you have nine years worth of kidnapping times four siblings. So, And the fact that you have children born there who – it's almost like – you know what it reminds me of? The of What's that, Gordon? It's a cult, an involuntary cult, though. Well, that's know. a given, but remember the M. Night Shyamalan movie, The Village? Yes. Have you ever seen that, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I have. So through the whole movie, you think it takes place in like the 1600s or the early 1700s mm -hmm. in a village of like the equivalent of, uh, I don't know, pilgrims. And there's a monster going around killing people, and they're not allowed to leave like the two miles, I mean the the five acre village and that once they get to a certain point they they've been told it's the end of the world and so throughout the movie you think this thing takes place in 1700s but girl runs jumps over a fence first thing she sees a car and a helicopter and it turns out it's 2009 whenever yeah. the movie that was made and these people much like these people in the netherlands they were brainwashed and told that it was a different time era and there was monsters out there's going to kill them and it was Basically, a rich family bought property in what used to be, I guess, like an old historical village, and somehow, which would never happen in real life, but apparently paid enough money that create a, a non-passable airspace over the area, so the planes and helicopters and everything. That's the farce fetch part. Obviously, you can brainwash people like over in the Netherlands, but the fact that you allegedly created airspace, um, that was the biggest far fetch part of that movie. But that's what this story reminds me of, and it's insane. Yeah, it is insane, and, and I also heard that I guess the local mail carrier uh, would obviously drop mail off at the closest other residence to the residence that where the people were being held captive, and they said, did you never suspect anything? You know, I mean, uh, nothing at all, and the guy said, I always looked over there, but I never suspected anything. He said, like you said, all he ever saw was a dog. And I think a goat, and a, there was a horse there at some point, but that was it. And the crazy thing is, is someone's paying the mortgage on this place. Now, I know mm -hmm. the Netherlands has a lot of government assistance and all that, but I doubt it's enough oh, to yeah, pay yeah. the rent. 
is this guy independently wealthy, or how was he coming up with the money to, you know, even if he got some government assistance, I'm sure it wasn't enough to flip the full bill. And oh, so it's no. weird. It's like, what is what was he? Was he leaving the property to go work for eight hours a day? And then, I don't know. That's just yeah. insane. This story, there's more to this story. Oh, yeah. We're going to find out more about this, no doubt about it. But I'll tell you what, Gordon, I believe that there are thousands of families like this around the globe. Thousands. And that's scary for the children, you know. Not Absolutely. Get, not being able to see what's going on in the real world, which I don't know, is a little scary itself, but at least can get to socialize and experience different things. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm trying to remember back what the hell was going on 10 years ago The force this guy to think that the apocalypse was coming and it was time to, to hide all out in the bottom of this house. Well, what, 10 years ago, prepper TV shows were really big? Yeah. Maybe he bought into some of that. Well, remember 2000, well, about 2012, if it was eight years ago, right? Well, I was going to say, I thought it was like eight years ago. Maybe not. Maybe it's 10 years ago. I remember the year 2012, the Mayans thought the end of the world was going to happen. So I wonder if it was around then that this guy went down. And it says pro- the, uh, they lived in an isolated lifestyle. He said, adding that they had been living under, living on the homestead for the past nine years. So it's twenty. Oh wow! It's twenty nineteen now. So this started back yeah, in twenty ten. Yeah, two thousand ten. Yeah, two thousand ten. Wow. Well, then it then it started before two thousand twelve. So they obviously maybe maybe that was part of the thing. Maybe they thought, hey. Let's go ahead and prepare now. In 2012, the world's going to end, so we're, we'll be safe and sound. So who knows, man? Well, one of the well, that's just speaking flash, of, go ahead. Flash forward to them getting integrated back into society, and one of the guys goes and gets a job, and somebody looks at him and says, "What rock did this guy call, crawl out of?" I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, when they went into hiding, if the kid was old enough, I think the iPhone two was out. I mean, there's so ah. much, there's so much that has changed. Um, It'd be even crazy if they're Americans because then they'd climb out of the rock and find out that Trump's president. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> How'd that oh, happen? Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll look. They have. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll look at this podcast and go, "What is that hanging from this guy's wall?" But it's just <laughs> it's just nuts. Yeah, it's wide open, man. WFO, bro. WFO. As always, this episode of the Waterman and D-Train show is brought to you by our friends by Act Computers. Act Computers has been servicing Southwest Florida since 2004, almost as long as those people have been locked up in the, in the cellar, providing IT work for uh, veterinary clinics, uh, medical clinics, um, businesses large and small. They do laptop repair, computer repair, tablet repair, server rollouts, online two-form authentication, online backups, antivirus, Anything you need, give them a call at 239-283-1120. And if you don't live within Southwest Florida, they can still help fix your computers remotely as long as you have a decent internet connection. So give them a call at 239-283-1120 or go to act-capecoral.com. And while you're out on the internet, we want to hear from you. We want your emails. Email us at info at d-410.com. If you have any questions, comments, statements, ideas for the podcast, uh, please send us an email. We will read them on the show and answer any questions you may have, good, bad, or indifferent. And while you're sending out that email, go ahead and stop at d-410.com. You know the deal. Please sign up for Patreon. we got three tiers. we got the Dollar Baller plan. we got the OG500 plan, which is only $3.50 a month. And the Long Arms Deep Pocket plan, which is $7.50 a month. And after month two, we will send you a free T-shirt of your choice. And last but not least, while you're on that same website, go ahead and click on that Amazon link and save it to your desktop. And whenever you shop on Amazon, please click that link, and it will not cost you a... Wow, that's quiet. That was disappointing. That's right. It won't cost you a... that shit up. But they will send us a... And that'll help support the show. So once again, everything can be found at d-410.com. You can find all our social media links there, our YouTube links, etc. Gordon, it's kind of been an all-news episode, so let's just roll with it. Are you ready? Yeah, man. I'll make myself ready. So, let's do it. Okie dokie. Joining us live from the WD-410 News Desk in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's our anchorman, newsman, everything man, Gordon Abernathy. Gordon, how you doing? As discussed earlier, I'm doing fine. So uh, one of our topics of conversation a little today, the last previous episode was modern police technology. Yep. Well, Las Vegas Valley is expanding the use of what's called the shot spotter technology. Have you heard of anything like this around your neck of the, the palm trees? What is it called? Shot spotter. 
No. Uh, yes. It doesn't. It's like an audible system that picks up on the sounds of gunfire throughout the city. Oh yeah. Absolutely, which makes me think because a lot of people like to let off illegal fireworks constantly. How much you may throw that off? You know, but, I, I think there is. Well, I know there's an audible difference because a gunfire has more of a crack, where a firework has more of a boom. But I'm sure they got that figured out with the uh, program that it has the ability to distinguish the difference between a firework, a thunderstorm, a gunshot, and an old yeah. jalopy backfiring in someone's driveway. Mm-hmm. Oh, so coming in from KNTV here in Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department and Clark County Commissioners announced the expansion of the shot or gunfire detection technology into several neighborhoods in Las Vegas Valley for this year. Officials made this amount blah, 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 on Thursday after a pilot program showed successful results. The first pilot program was launched in 2017 in the northeast part of the town. Good call. And expanded to the second location in the south and southeast areas of the valley. Uh, Clark County's proud to announce that the expansion of the spot shotter program across the valley will help. Uh, will actually help, they believe, to uh, reduce the crime and make our uh, neighborhoods safer, according to Commissioner Marilyn Kirkpatrick. Uh, it is an acoustic detection technology, and it uses audio sensors to detect, locate, and alert police agencies to the location of gunfire incidents in real time. So I think this is a this is a pretty good thing happening out there. Uh, so we know there's no shortage of gangsters here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Raiders. Um, <laughs> oh man, you haven't seen the half of it yet, bro. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyway, uh, during the first nine months of the pilot program, the shot spotter identified 487 potential gunshot events, with a 65 percent of them going that typically go unreported to police by phone or somebody hey, saying, hey, man, I think I heard a gunshot. So, you know, they compare what the, the normal calls are versus this, and, and they've got a 65% jump on them. Of those events, there was reported emergency services, shot spotter reported incidents faster than dispatch about 86% of the time, which is a good, good thing going there, too. So hopefully this continues to work out. And, and I don't know, probably be like anything else. Like it doesn't matter if you got cameras – your house decorated in cameras now. Guys just walk up and they pretty much photobomb it and move on with their ways. Cool. So, that is what, what we got. So, um, this is a first. It is the first all female spacewalking team. Woo! Spacewalking team. Are they hot? Look <laughs> good. Really, Dave? What, man? <laughs> They're female athletes. Carpet- Carpet munching in space, bro. <laughs> oh, hold on. I guess we need to do this, Gordon. Um, All right. Uh, hold what, on. What'd we do, Crap. man? What'd I do? Where did I put that? Go ahead. I'll find it when he does another one. The world's first all-female spacewalking team, and no, they're not like basketball or anything, uh, made history high above Earth on Friday, replacing broken parts on the International Space Station's power grid. Uh, pretty important. So as... NASA astronauts Christina Koch and Maria Mir successfully completed their uh, job <laughs> with screwdrivers, wrenches, and power grip tools. Hell yeah, Koch and Mir. In, in a half a century that spacewalking that men were not part of the action. And they insisted that they're doing this. Uh, they've been, they were just doing their job after years of training, following the footsteps of women who paved the way. I say fantastic. Let's just continue yeah. knocking the walls um, and, and go from there. Uh, the the mm. story is lengthy, but... Uh, it's a it's a pretty cool little background there. Hell yeah! Yep. I can't find that drop that we played the shit up last week. I guess I didn't save it. Go ahead. See, well, that story Don talked about. That story Don talked about. Oh, I'm sorry, I stepped on your news, did I? On my news, and uh, I think that's all I'm going to have this evening. That's cool, man. Hey, dude, well, yeah. Chicks. That was Gordon Abernathy joining us live from the WT410 News Desk, brought to you by our friends at Sleefs.com. If you're into athletics or your kids are doing things athletic and you want uh, gaiters for their cleats or headbands or what have you, uh, yoga pants, socks, whatever you need, go to Sleefs.com, use the promo code D41040, and you will save 40% on your entire shopping cart. That's sleefs.com, S-L-E-E-F-S.com. Use the promo code D41040. Woo! Woo! So what else you guys got going on? 
Go for it. Here it is. Hi, my name is Tom McDonald. Welcome to the show. If you are easily offended, then you probably should go. I still don't should. know why that drops off. It drives me nuts. That's funny. Oh, man. Um, so we're all three in our either early to mid 40s, correct? Yeah. Mm, yeah. You sound like you're sitting in front of your AC, but that's all right. Go ahead. I know. 40 is the new 20 because 20 is the new 12. Uh, tell that to your body. Have you found any. Uh, Signs of aging in this range. Other than the long gray nose hairs that develop overnight that weren't there the day before, and then when you're out running or doing something athletic, you feel like something's tickling your face, and you realize as you're breathing out, you have a long gray nose hair that comes out of your nose like a party favor, and then when you breathe in, it curls back up, and so then the only way to get it out is you have to breathe out, time it, grab it, and yank it out of your head, and it feels like it's rooted to the back of your brain? No. Oh, yeah. So I'm I'm guessing what I've experienced the last and this is embarrassing. The last few days is age related, but what? I now I now officially know what where the term pain in the ass comes from. Hemorrhoids? Oh you, or first get, time or getting a finger up your ass. But I haven't been there yet, thank God. But yes, it's yeah, like the eighties. There was tons of hemorrhoid humor out there, right? Remember yeah. how? the donuts and you don't see that much anymore. But yes, I've I've had to uh I had to go to the, the the Walgreens yesterday and, and pick up some stuff. And not real happy about it. Dude, dude, How? I'm going to tell you. Go ahead. No, go I'm ahead. serious. Listen, bro. Listen, I'm going to tell you some of the most bitching hemorrhoid cream you can get, man. No joke. No joke. When I was well, – I, I, I went to the hospital, bro. I had them so bad at one point, man. And when I was in there, there was a female doctor. And, of course, she couldn't stick her finger in my ass without having a male doctor or a male nurse there because, Moist. you know, I, I, you know, I could claim, yeah, exactly. I could yep. claim sexual harassment, you know. Nurse. Listen, I could claim sexual harassment if that guy wasn't in there. But anyways, so she wrote me this prescription stuff, man, and I, and I guess they sold it over the counter now. But it's this tip, dude, and you stick it in your butt. He's an asshole, you, sir. It's like a inhaler, man. It's like an inhaler, dude. And I'm telling you, man, this will take care of them hemorrhoids and a heartbeat. Asshole, you have, uh, with the quickness, man, instead of yeah. using that preparation H, bro. I tell you what, it was something caused by a very uh, rough week of using the bathroom. And, uh, <laughs> I'm glad to yeah. say I've, I haven't gotten to that point in my young life yet. Well, start taking some Metamucil, dude. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen to you, man. You'll get it at one point. See, you yeah, can see. And see, here's the thing. You've had kidney stones, bro. Yes, and I, I have. Had those. As, those are have, horrible. D-Train's yeah. going to his first hemorrhoid right before he goes to run his first marathon. Oh! Don't even go there. <laughs> I actually have my Savage cool. Race coming up on the 9th, so uh, that'll be first. Dude, I'll send you over my half-used bottle of hemorrhoid cream. Nah, I'm uh, good. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to apply anything. It's touched <laughs> your... Uh, He's an <laughs> asshole, sir. That's and gonna gross. Be- <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, now I'm like a real piece of shit. Like if a piece Damn of shit right. ate a piece of shit and took a pee and shit, you're that piece of shit. <laughs> yep, that. Damn right. Got to work on the end of that one too. That was Hell on me. Yeah. Well, my boys, I have nothing left, man. Well, this has been another episode of the Waterman D Train Show. Hopefully, next week we'll have everybody in their places that they usually are. Yeah. So that. Uh, like I said, Dave's mic came in great tonight, so that just reinforces our hypothesis that the problem's on Gordon's end and not on mine. But anyhow, it's been a long episode. Life is long. Life is extremely hard. Hopefully we said something in this episode that made you laugh or uh, give you some ideas in a way to better your life or better those around you. Go out and do what you got to do to accomplish your dreams, to meet your short-term goals, and to help your community because one morning you may wake up dead. Gordon! Gus Gordon is gone. Dave. All right, all right, all right, man. Thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in. I'm stoked to uh, be back. And, hey, man, have a good week, and we'll catch you guys next week, man. Woo! Good luck with all of your new um, responsibilities. responsibilities at the radio station, and don't fuck it up. Thank you, man. I'm not, man. Later. Later.